two, one, and we are recording. We're live with Arpit. I am excited about this. How are you, my friend? Hey, Sunny. It is, it is a great thing to do this with you. It is like chatting with a friend over a coffee. I so know. We are sitting so far away in the world, almost halfway across the world right now. Different right. Time zones, but thank you for inviting me. It is great. You're welcome. And I am very, very excited about this. And Arpit, okay, I know we have a bit of a limited time today, mostly on my schedule. And so I want to maybe kind of just jump into some of the topics. So I like to start with where did we first meet? And most of the times I forget, but I'm trying to remember. I do think I remember where we met. Uh, do you recall? I think it was in Bombay, right? It was in Mumbai, yes. In Mumbai. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the hotel or the restaurant, it but was, it was somewhere. Uh, I remember it was uh, a mall called... Uh, uh, palladium uh, mm. or not palladium uh, phoenix mall and uh, i think it was a starbucks uh, inside that mall that we had first met at. i do and yeah all, yeah all all three of you or four of you were there i remember satvik and harish there i don't remember abhinand and uh, and three of you were there and uh, and i asked you why were you there and you said oh we are, we came here to see an investor so i said great that's that's good <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I think that was the weekend that we did our Mumbai Angels uh, pitch. Yeah, and, I think so. Uh, and and there's 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 quite a bit of a backstory with uh, you know us even uh, you know connecting with you guys. You see Mumbai in my background. I do see Mumbai. I love that picture. It's so classy. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't even know if you know this story, Arpit. But I think our initial like uh, kind of connection was we, you know, we were trying to get a hold of Bloom for some time because we we'd heard about you guys. We we loved everything you were doing. Uh, and then there were some gentlemen. I think that we'd connected over LinkedIn. We tried many different things. And I think finally, when we when Satvik and I in were desperation, in desperation, you sent me a message on Twitter. Uh, okay, so th that probably what was finally what did it. <laughs> but I even remember me and Satvik prior to us meeting you one day, uh, literally in a car outside of your office, not even with an appointment. <laughs> and we, 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 we talked to your receptionist or somebody and we said, hey, can we get a meeting? And we never ended up getting it. But we literally, I think, camped out in front of your office even. But, uh, but I, I remember when we first met you, we were like, oh, this is such a blessing. We're so excited. Um, okay. So, Arpe, um, you know, like I was mentioning to you earlier, you know, one of my goals is really to, to kind of uh, capture people's story their kind of entrepreneurial venture there. I mean, in your case, you know, you've had a very illustrious uh, career with, with Bloom and, and things before. And, and so really curious to kind of dig in a little bit. And, and, you know, when I say your story, some people start with their first job. Some people start with where they were born. Some people start with their parents meeting. So it's really up to you wh wherever you want to fast forward into. But I but would love to get a bit of a backstory in terms of, you know, kind of where, where what your lens was coming in before we all met. So, uh, I think I cut my professional teeth uh, and not, not talking about education and where I was born and raised. Uh, I cut my professional teeth and I started figuring out what I really wanted to do uh, in, my, in my life as, as my work uh, was with this organization called Head Start Network, uh, which is a nonprofit profit works for promoting startups and entrepreneurship. Again, serendipity. I was just an enthusiastic kid back in 20, 2005 and 2007, where I was involved with a lot of interesting activities called bar camps. I'm not sure if any you would have heard about bar camps. Uh, we did a bunch of bar camps in Bangalore and Mumbai. And uh, that one thing led to the other. And, and we said, okay, there has to be a permanent organization that helps startups grow. So with this just one line objective, uh, 13, 14 of us got together in a Bangalore restaurant and he said, okay, here is an organization called Head Start, uh, which we think will be very useful for, for startups. We had no idea what business model these organizations will have, how will it grow, will it find traction, will it find volunteers, will it find reputation, nothing of that sort. Cut to, the, cut to today, 13 years, back, 13 years later, we are a, one of the largest organizations supporting entrepreneurs in this country. We are more than, uh, we are present in more than 25 different cities. And in the COVID era, cities don't matter. So almost entirely it's online now. Uh, there are more than 250 volunteers across these cities doing a whole bunch of interesting activities with startups and with uh, entrepreneurs across the country. And, and when I say entrepreneurs, not just focus on venture capital supported entrepreneurs, but general entrepreneurs, people who are looking at doing services startups or you know consulting gigs and so on. All kind of people find their support and find their home. They find buddies, they find... Uh, mentors, they find uh, uh, talent 
uh, who they work with. So uh, Head Start is where I got my grooming and I found that working with startup is something which is very core to me, which is very dear. And this is something I want to do for my life. One thing led to the other, I was working for, a, uh, uh, I was starting, I started a, a company called Academic Ventures. This was into commercialization of technology more than 10 years back. Uh, realized that's not going anywhere and uh, joined a job. And then uh, Bloom opportunity came along in about uh, early 2014, I joined Bloom. So I've been here for more, about seven years now. And, you know, journey as an entrepreneur, journey as an entrepreneur is different from journey as an investor. I think I've taken up well uh, to be an investor. My DNA as a startup enabler has come to great views here. I do not look at entrepreneurs and look at them as customers or uh, or target. I look at them as partners and I look at them as uh, people who I can influence. The core philosophy has always been that uh, entrepreneurship is the prime mover of this world. And uh, what I am doing is enabling, uh, by, by enabling entrepreneurship, I am basically changing the whole world uh, in its own unique way. A lot of our companies are doing work that you know, on things and products and services which didn't exist before. And it is a fabulous privilege to be working with entrepreneurs like you uh, who are creating great things and who are building great stories. Okay, so that that's fascinating. Curious, you said, you know, um, at a pretty early point, you realized that startups and entrepreneurship was something that you wanted to, where you belong. Yes. What was it? You, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, being able to build great products, um, you know, being able to help people. But but I'm just curious, like it, it's not obviously it, it's a very, I guess, non-obvious uh, path, especially in, you know, in many parts of the world. If you tell someone, oh, I'm going to start a tech startup, it's not, uh, you know, it, it can be seen as sexy, but oftentimes it's seen as something very, very, you know, the ratio of success is low, um, lots of trial and error, et cetera, et cetera. So curious, like how, what that early on caught your you know imagination and did you say look like this is how i can make a difference okay so um see these decisions are made by an enthusiastic kid and and a kid who would otherwise not care about what and did not have an idea about what is uh, what is a usual conventional wisdom so you're talking about okay yes i want to i want to help entrepreneurs because this seems like a great idea you know, it, it is not, not very different from someone becoming a fan of a, of a small, small time movie or a small time star. And you just want to, be, want to you know, follow him or her and, and follow the, where it goes. So the decision, the core decision, uh, Sunny, you should notice that it was a random incident. In the grandest scheme of things, it was a random incident. What is useful is to understand that while you're pursuing it, it added value to you. And being truth to, to, truthful to yourself, you said, okay, if it's, if it's adding value to me, if it's fulfilling me, why would I not pursue it more and more and more and more and, and so on. So one thing then led to the other and then snowballed into where I am today. Uh, uh, there was no clear thought. And, and mind you, in 2007, the idea of startup had not germinated in most people's minds. Uh, the word startup didn't exist. People were not talking about it. Mentorship and investment didn't exist. I was simply blindly following a trend and I could have fallen flat, you know, if this had not taken off like it has in India over the last 10 years, then I would be doing something completely different. Or maybe I was continuing to follow a very niche fashion, which no one subscribes to. But I was okay taking that kind of risk. Fascinating. And, 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 and Arpit, I mean, at this time, I guess, what, what year are we in now? I mean, so you're, you're, you mentioned now you're, you get introduced to Bloom and, uh, and you make this. We are in 2020 and uh, we are, uh, I got introduced to Bloom in 2013 wow. and I started working with them, with them in uh, 2014. And how, and what did that, the team look like back then, Bloom's uh, kind of composition? <laughs> Very interesting that you asked this. So uh, our organization is, a, is, a, is now a large organization for venture capital standards. Uh, we are talking about, about 20, 25 people in our company, uh, which, which is uh, very large by venture capital company standards. Our firm is uh, still small. We are totally AUM is in the range of 250, 300 billion dollars, but it, is, uh, it has more than 20 people. So on a, on a per AUM per capita, we are very, very, uh, we are very small. Uh, so we are definitely far more staffed. The important thing to understand is that we have chosen this conscious path. 
because we believe that you need more and more hands to add value to startups because our core opportunity area is early stage startups and we want to make sure that these startups get supported in whichever manner possible uh, through bloom itself and and capital is just one of the many things that we provide so when you take that idea and you, and you and you make it your core you are ending up in a situation where you have 25 people in bloom you have an organization called passion connect which is involved in hr services and hiring and an organization called constellation blue which is involved in finance legal accounting and so on uh, services which are themselves about 100 plus people so overall we are an ecosystem 125 people across three cities and and growing from there we every year we probably hire 20 30 people to, to put together so it is a fast growing ecosystem but the core is that you want to help entrepreneurs in everything that is possible and what was the genesis of a bloom look like in the sense that like what why did the founders initially come together and, and what year was that around and you really curious kind of very interesting. So, feel back uh, it was it was one. the same uh, for the same reason that you had come to mumbai uh, you had come to mumbai angels and uh, Karthik and Sanjay, Karthik Nath and Sanjay Reddy met at Mumbai Angels as angels themselves. And they had built a bit of reputation around themselves back in 2009. Uh, and they decided that, you know, something like this has to happen for in, to India because uh, a very early stage startup struggles to find my capital apart from angel capital. So someone had to dedicate their life building a fund. And these small funds do not earn enough economics which is why it is it is kind of counterintuitive mm -hmm. for most large uh, institutions to come and set up funds in India at such small scale. So Bloom Fund 1 was very small, 100 crore rupees, roughly about $50 million in today's terms. Very small to run a fund with a team of mm -hmm. five, six people. So all of us, all of us were mm -hmm. you know, really doing many things at the same time and, and trying to somehow make it work. What kind of an entrepreneurial effort. About three years later, we raised our second fund things became slightly better, but we continue to become bigger and bigger. And uh, with fund three, we are becoming, we have become a hundred million dollar fund and a lot of reputation has been built over the last 10 years. <clears throat> interesting, interesting. And, and, and I'm just curious, so, so those seven years, like, uh, you know, any sort of milestones you can point to? So after joining them, what was one of your first kind of big, uh, you know, investments or, or, or teams that you got to work with that, that you recall? Well, see, Sunny, that's, that's the thing. If you are focused on, on impacting entrepreneurs, every meeting is important. Mm. Every person that you're mm. meeting is important. Of course, as an investor, uh, you you have an you have an obligation, you have a duty to orient yourself towards what is giving maximum return because that is what we are promising mm. our investors. But uh, but as but as a person who's enabling startups, every meeting, every entrepreneur is important. Sometimes some of the entrepreneurs will not find value, will not deliver returns to you. However, to me personally. They are still as important. Mm. So it is very, very difficult to pinpoint and say, okay, I like meeting this entrepreneur. I did not like meeting another mm. entrepreneur because everyone has a story. And remember, mm. very few people, at least in India, really appreciate the fact that entrepreneurs are here as uh, uh, entrepreneurs are living an extremely lonely journey. And if they find support and if they find empathy, on the other side of the table, they are going mm. to be very excited about it. Everyone is very excited when they see someone being relating to them because most people in their life do not. That has been my core learning. In terms of experiences, you know, there have been so many experiences, both good and bad. For example, some entrepreneur, I may have given them an advice which seemed very harsh at the time and they came back and realized it and then they came back and said, thank you for telling us. We at least, it got us thinking. And then uh, because I was the person that I am, uh, I was the person that I was, there was so much that, uh, that I told people, which was trash. And, uh, and you know, I, looking back, I should not have said them. But, you know, some of the worst experiences were when I was uh, being very straight with an entrepreneur and I used to tell people frequently, oh, I don't think you should do this business. You are wasting your time. Maybe that advice was good, but culturally uh, and in, in, the, in the particular situation, it probably was a bad advice. And I've learned a lot since then. 
Therefore, uh, I do manage to you know measure my response before I give them now. And, and Arpit, I imagine you know in a country like India, where now startups are really picking up, you must be getting approached like by a lot of people. <laughs> um, so, what kind of like again lens or filter or like kind of questions are you asking in your mind as you're speaking to to entrepreneurs? Mm-hmm. And like, what are the threads you're looking for? You said that you know usually there's like a story, and every entrepreneur is telling a story. But are there certain things in your experience that you've you've kind of noticed that? look like uh, like if i notice these types of things then i sh- i need to kind of dig in further do you, do you know what i'm saying like what well, how do you, how do you i mean how do you realize an opportunity like before like it's cuz you're at the early stages like you said so i'm just saying like these are very very speculative very very pie in the sky usually powerpoint presentations or maybe a simple mvp you have to now go based on a narrative on a story that yes, I did believe that there's a market size, market space here, and that this team's able to capitalize. So curious, like, as an investor, how do you how do you approach that uh, equation? <laughs> so what are you asking me, Sunny? As you, uh, as you fully appreciate, mm. is the core of venture capital, mm-hmm. and you know the beautiful part about our industry and our and our work is that there is not a lot of science to learn. Mm. You know, if if I give you an Excel sheet and I give you a lecture. maybe in 3 hours you learn as much as i as i have as i have learned and that is all there is that is there to learn in terms of science in terms of numbers because those things are not going to change and they are mostly very obvious for example a startup should be should have target a large market a startup should have a defensible product a startup should have scalability a startup should have uh, you know uh, ability to monetize their influence and so on right don't need this much is there to learn what however matters uh, and which is what separates and i don't think i am a, a great investor yet uh, what separates great investors from others is that you are able to identify the spark much earlier as compared to everyone else or you are able to identify or build relationship with entrepreneurs much ahead of its time before the trend is taken off because once a trend is taken off and people have figured out this is a great thing to do you will of course uh, you will follow the trend and there's so many people who follow and still make money but the, when you're taking the risk and when you are basically saying this to the world that this is where money is going to be made you are pretty much alone uh, and that is very unique about our business so i'll tell you what is important for us one thing which is very very important for us is to look at uh the the level of ambition that an entrepreneur comes with while of course market size is important uh, defensibility is important team structure is important the kind of talent or experience people are bringing is important as well a very important part of any startup success is whether the entrepreneur is willing to put a lot of effort in reinventing herself as she goes along in her journey for example each startup that we invest in would grow maybe 1000x or maybe more 10000x or in a very short span of 5 to 7 years this is abnormal growth right imagine one of our companies is an academy and when they came to us they really had no revenue and very few customers very few uh, very limited audience all the way back in 2015 not very different from the time that you had come come to meet us and today they are they probably have you know tens of millions of people using academy every day hmm. right so they probably have grown maybe 100000x since we first met them right that kind of scale only happens because an entrepreneur is madly pursuing a thought and in this he or she is willing to do it undergo a lot of personal transformation a lot of personal sacrifice a lot of personal growth it is essentially very personal that is a very important factor and only people who are sus- who are able to sustain such high amount of growth are people who are extremely ambitious and will not get stopped at anything personal reinvention personal reinvention and That's... many times over and many times over and be, being willing to do this again and again and again in pursuit of an opportunity that is very rare quality 
You know, Arpit, that seems like an appropriate uh, time to maybe bring up, uh, I don't know, either Harish or Sattvik. Um, you know, w- one of the reasons I'm, I'm kind of doing this, uh, this podcast um, is because of this whole pandemic and everything. I kind of feel like a lot of what happened earlier this year with uh, some of the victories that UnoCoin experienced was a bit overshadowed. And, and so I, I was kind of hoping to put a bit of a spotlight on, on some of the work that the guys have done um, in terms of, you know, the grit and, and, and the hard work that, that they've done and really shared it with a global audience. But curious, well, what if, uh, and maybe I'm fast forwarding a bit through some of the, some of the you know, meatier parts of our story, but, but curious, uh, um, you know, what's your relationship with, with Unocoin, Unocoin been like? Um, you know, and even prior to us meeting, had you heard about Bitcoin? Like, were you even aware of it? Or was it more when we met, did you come across it? Really curious on that front. I tell you about Bitcoin, there, there used to be a friend of mine who prefers not to be named, uh, who, who had asked me uh, when I was in Pune in 2010, whether I, I will buy a few hundred of his Bitcoins for a few hundred dollars, because he was in, looking for a liquidity and really wanted to get out of that. And I said, what the hell is Bitcoin? That is when I first went and read up on Wikipedia, what exactly is Bitcoin? Right. So I had heard about Bitcoin, but of course mm. it was back of my mind and never exploded because I never came across anyone else talking about it. Somewhere along the line, before you guys had approached us, uh, I, Bitcoin had started rolling up in terms of new technology to look at. You know, Gartner publishes these reports and cryptocurrency is an important part of their report. So they were talking about this, this trend heating up and blockchain and Bitcoin had become very important to look at as concepts. Some books must have been written, you know, some some articles must have been written. I had no idea what it costs to buy a Bitcoin. I didn't care about it. But when you guys approached it, honestly, I was not looking at Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as a fintech play because I'm not a fintech expert. I was looking at it as a, as a science play because a new thing is coming up and a new business model is getting created. That was most exciting to me to be able to look at it from first principles and say, okay, so can something be done uh, in India with a new technology like this? Hmm. That is when I and, and I said, okay, this is very interesting. Um, so yeah, that is my my engagement with Bitcoin. Just full dis- disclosure that I and about two years later after I met you, I did end up buying some Bitcoin on Unocoin, and I continue to hold them. Hmm. So yeah, I think uh, I am a full believer personally and professionally. Um, Unocoin. The most the most striking part about all your guys' effort is that. You guys did not start Bitcoin or, or Unocoin as a company or as a place where you will make money or as a business which will, uh, which will you know, give people jobs and stuff. You were following passion. And you know, I know a thing about following passion as well. So I think you were, you were very, very green. At the same time, you were very, very honest and authentic. And you were similarly, you know, to almost say you were foolishly pursuing something which is too big to imagine and mm. too big to build. But you said, this is a great opportunity and we are pursuing it. There was something very, very pure about it. And, and I think from very first meeting onwards, I had connected with you at a level which you know I feel very, very happy about. It is very uh, personal to me, uh, whether you or Satvik or, or Harish or Abhinand, all four of you were pursuing this opportunity as a way that you can make a difference in this world, starting with India, maybe over the world. Of course, even at that point of time, there were largest exchanges which which were being built. Uh, The the Bitcoin world was exploding. There's so much that people had done, which India had not even seen. And so the most obvious question after that was, what would it make, how would it make sense to have, you know, a Bitcoin company in India, if uh, everyone else is also going to do the same thing and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, world is essentially democratic it took it uh, respects no country's boundaries but he said okay uh, this has to be someone who will do, will do this and the initial thesis was that uno coin would build an exchange between uh, between rupee and and bitcoin or cryptocurrencies such that a lot of people a lot of merchants will be able to use uh, bitcoin or exchange currency thereof so that was my initial hypothesis. Continues to stand, although we are currently being seen more as a store of value and a trading platform as compared to using the money or replacing money as it is. And, and then 
Yeah, yes, continue, continue, Arpit, sorry. Uh, so, um, okay, so what, what, now this is the starting point. About uh, what Harish and Satvik managed to do uh, during the course of the Supreme Court judgment, uh, the RBI ban and so on was so, was so, was outstanding. Outstanding in the set, in, in a way that I have never seen anyone doing it, right? And this is something which is, uh, in which entrepreneurs like yours continue to both inspire me and amaze me. You know, there was a period of one and a half years when they had no revenue, no employees, no salary, nothing. And they continued to persist behind a case, a, a court case against uh, India's top regulators uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a matter which had very clear public opinion, where people did not want it. And you won, right? For 18 months of fighting with uncertainty and with the top possible, uh, uh, with top possible lawyers, with top possible courts, and to be able to find believers, you know, from among the judges about how your case was very, uh, was valid, uh, to me is is very inspiring, right? I, all I did was, you know, whenever Hari showed up in Delhi, I took him for a coffee. Mm -hmm. But, you know, back of my mind, I was not sure why he was doing it. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was my job to continue supporting and I was supporting, I was supporting and just making sure that he knows that I'm there, he can reach out to me. But I did not, I didn't think it would, they would be so, be, yeah, you would actually get the judgment in your favor so that you could restart Uno coin. I think that was outstanding, remarkable and outstanding. I don't know how many people think about it. It is a personal journey for me. And uh, I think, uh, and, and now my respect for what you guys have caused so far has uh, grown dramatically. Hey, Arpa, you know, a lot of people don't know. I mean, uh, our future hung in its kind of, in its balance uh, many times, you know, but one of them was before we met you in the sense that one of our, you know, Barry had invested in us back in 2014. Yeah, I know. But it was very clear that our next set of investors wanted us to have um, you know, for the lack of a better word, adult supervision. <laughs> and so, so they made it clear to us that they wanted us to have, um, you know, reputable investors lead our round. And so, you know, you guys investing in us um, uh, was, was really, really important. And so starting from there to all the support and everything has been, you know, obviously monumental. And, and part of my goal was also to put a spotlight a little bit on, on the people around us that have helped us as well. And so, so really, really thank you. And uh, Bloom has been nothing but great to us. And you're right. I think it's, it's been super like, you know, the, 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 uh, the chips were stacked up against, uh, uh, against Unicoin. That's for sure. And so yeah. the fact that we came out the other side, I think is it's oh, a little it's... example of against all odds. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Against all, <laughs> against all odds it's like the David versus Goliath like uh, I don't know yeah. how you want to put it yeah. and you know for the longest time Arpit people used to ask me about this story and I used to say someday we'll make a Bollywood movie about it someday we'll make a Bollywood movie <laughs> and then finally I thought to myself I'm like I have a camera I have zoom yeah. I know yeah. everyone that's part of the story so you know maybe <laughs> we'll get some movie. Yeah, yeah. So for now, I'm capturing all the stories, you know, on YouTube. And then later on, we'll come back and uh, start the Netflix uh, special. Hey, listen, I know, like I said, we I wanted to be mindful of our time today. I had another call. But Arpit, um, you know, in terms of we talked a little bit about your story, I would love to dig in uh, on another follow up even more on some of that and, and, and Bloom as well. We talked a bit about, you know, Bitcoin and kind of your relationship with Unocoin and all that. Um, you know, one of the questions I want to ask you is like, are there any truths that you hold? I mean, you, you mentioned earlier that, that you, you did acquire a little bit of Bitcoin a long time ago. And so if you have Bitcoin, then, you know, you're part of the Bitcoin family. Just curious, are you, um, any truths that you hold that you think most other people in Bitcoin would maybe disagree with you on? Um, yeah. <laughs> I um, I don't know how many people will disagree with this because mm. I haven't taken a survey, but most people think that Bitcoin uh, is not going to be the, the most important currency among the basket of cryptocurrencies. In my mind, Bitcoin will be 
the most important currency for a long time amongst mm. other currencies being equally important i'm sure it ether and so on will be very important i believe that there is something very exciting about the network effect that bitcoin and just one asset among the asset class has managed to create which is very exciting to me in my i don't know how many people really believe in it but i do believe that uh, bitcoin is very important while other and and it is bitcoin which will first create the massive impact and we are, we are only seeing early signs of it we haven't really seen the the movie start and just a trailer maybe today and there is so much more that bitcoin will cause and yes you know at some point bitcoin will lend its way automatically to something else but at least in the short term when i'm saying short term about 10 years it is a, it's going to be a bitcoin decade yeah yeah holy i i totally agree with you on that one you know i was listening to michael saylor have you have you been following this guy uh no. micro strategy oh my goodness he's a he's a ceo of a public company in the united states mm-hmm. that put oh i'm going to butcher the number i think 500 million dollars or something into bitcoin wow and his reasoning is is that he sees bitcoin as a a synthetic engineered treasury asset not he, he said it's not he said the narrative around oh you should have 1% on your balance sheet uh, exposure for 1% of the population he said those days are done he said now it's about 50% of all of the money that is available out there is potentially up for grabs like can you wow. imagine what that means as an upside for bitcoin yeah. arpit it's yeah. crazy i can't um, imagine and, and like i said i do want to do a follow up because there's a, there's a lot to this this thing i wanted to ask you here yeah. but um yeah. you know around i'm really curious and, and again maybe i think i do think another follow up podcast would be awesome on this one is institutional interest i know it's not you know mm-hmm. top of mind in india yet but tata mm-hmm. has signaled recently that they're building you know uh, tools for this yeah. this game yeah. uh paytm you know there, there are others more and more that that are starting to signal that that they're looking at this space you heard paypal recently yeah. has now bitcoin yeah. integration i'm very so, excited about paypal mhm mhm so so i would love to like i said i'd love to a follow up with you just given again you're you know in mumbai you you're with a vc doing great work um would you know kind of peel that onion as well hey arpit before i let you go here um as i mentioned i had another call but do you have uh, any any um like i don't know like i guess parting words of of advice or wisdom as i was t- telling you one of my goals is to encourage more people to build startups and i know it seems like a very difficult challenging task but um yeah for those of the, for those entrepreneurs out there that that were let's say in uno coin or the other company you mentioned their stage before you guys invested maybe they're on the fence and they're thinking okay maybe i should send these guys an email and maybe not like what 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 do you maybe encourage those people to do i would advise that why entrepreneurs are chasing their their best growth their dreams and they are working really hard to achieve accomplish their dreams and they're falling and starting again and falling and starting again so on two things they should definitely do one they focus on the fact that it is going to be a marathon and not a sprint so focus on themselves build capability focus on mind body focus on physical strength and the stamina and exercise and don't don't lose out on that maybe a few days you'll have investor calls back to back and travel and etc is fine but make sure that you're doing it you're giving time to yourself and making sure that uh, you are able to focus on your body and mind that goes a long way and second is have a support system do not miss out your friends there there will be always a core group of people who will believe in you it could be your uh, your wife it could be your uh, Uh, your your friends any spouse uh, you know uh, it could be a college kid it could be also your your own kids but some people uh, who believe in you uh, for the fact that you are you and not the entrepreneur etc etc that you play every day and are comfortable with the fact that it is okay if you fail but their relationship is not going to change with you that's mm-hmm. very important to me i think uh, these two things uh, every entrepreneur should have Uh, while they are pursuing everything madly and so on otherwise you know it is not worth it and i'd maybe add to that list parents 
parents parents uh, yeah. stand out as uh, kind of unconditional supporters as well <laughs> my dad gives every facebook post a like whether it's yeah. actually he likes it or not yeah. everyone gets yeah. a like um Absolutely. and Arpit, where do people you know uh, as you know a lot of bitcoiners around the world uh follow me on twitter and stuff like that so i want to if people want to kind of follow more of your train of thought and, and your work where, where do people find you on twitter where do entrepreneurs find bloom ventures on the internet so uh, we are fairly popular on Twitter in India. Uh, my Twitter handle is ARPIIT. Uh, Blue Ventures is Blue Ventures. Uh, they're easy to find. Twitter is the most power, most uh, common medium that we post our thoughts on. Uh, and of course, I'm on LinkedIn. They can follow if you want. But uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear from everyone. And they are, we have questions. I would love to hear in comments. Cool. In hey, uh, are, are you guys investing in any AI companies? Or like yeah, not AI so, companies. That's a bit of a, a term, yeah. weird term. But every, like every company is AI company. Now. Every company is an AI company. Okay, okay. No, so we definitely need to do a follow up. Our pit. Like I said, I apologize yeah. for cutting our our, our short. Oh, I usually like to do like yeah. a solid ninety minutes. But I'll I'll uh, I'll set some more time up for us. You know, in the coming Lovely weeks or whatever it is. And uh, oh yeah, always a pleasure. Always a and pleasure. Sorry for being late to this. Take care. That's okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye.